I wasn't cracked in high school. Or at least, I never built insane projects like a lot of other people did. But after getting to MIT, I built some really cool stuff. I'll talk about what I did to actually get in at the end of the video though, if you're interested in that. The first project I worked on was with a team of six for MIT's toy product design class. I pretty much worked on all the electronics and the programming. It's like Dance Dance Revolution on a balance board. The other big project that I worked on freshman year was I worked on lightsabers for a hot minute. Well, toy lightsabers for combat. Because I took fencing. One of the PE classes at MIT was fencing. I was like, this is kind of sick. So these had an accelerometer, LED strip, the point of the toys that's like hit tracking all in one. I learned PCB development for a hot minute. And this is one of the PCBs I designed my freshman year. Uh, it works, but not as well as I wanted it to. But it was a good learning experience, having never done PCB design before. So my sophomore year, I took this class called 2007, which is the class that FIRST is based off of, like FRC, FTC, are based off this class from MIT. I didn't do so hot in the, the 2007 version, but there was a special version called 2S007, which was pretty much the same competition, except I had to build a different robot, and it was targeted towards like autonomous machines. Uh, so I had to do like more programming on that one compared to the other one, which was like a remote control car. I got second place in that one, which I'm pretty proud of. And then I turned the 2007 version of the robot into a combat robot for fun as well. It was around this time that I started getting really into making combat robots, like the engineering behind them and how to make things not suck, not break, and store a ton of energy. That was something that I found really interesting, and I still do a lot of combat robotic stuff to this day. I think most of the things that I learned at MIT came from combat robotics. So a lot on how to make things durable, how to build things quick, how to make things repairable. And I think I got half decent at machining too from combat robotics. So what I'm showing you here are a couple of the three pound combat robots I designed and built myself. I'm gonna come back to the larger combat robots that I ended up designing um, further along in my MIT career. So over the summer, MIT did this random program where they would ship out a MIT student or two to go to this international robotics competition in India. And I got selected and I was like, oh, free trip to India. So I went and met a lot of great guys, uh, built a robot that ended up faring pretty well in the competition and we got second place at this international robotics competition called uh, IDC Robocon. My junior year I did a couple side quests like making this wallet for my brother and then I got really interested in the axial flux motor uh, so I 3D printed and made a couple and then I wrote up a little thing about it for, uh, for a class and I don't know it was pretty interesting I learned a lot about motors and I don't know I can make motors now. I then took this class called Power Electronics Lab. It felt like two years of EE in one semester. It was kind of crazy. For my final project for that class, I built a record player that senses the vibrations with a little piezo disc. It was a circuit with a Class D audio amplifier, a buck converter, a motor driver, and a couple of other control circuitry. I milled a PCB for it because it was more convenient because I didn't want to have to solder it a million times, but it was a good class. Junior year, I did more combat robots, mostly in the 12 pound weight class. Uh, quite a few of them were flamethrowers. This one's an overhead flamethrower. Um, this one over here is a cam lifter flamethrower. And I also made a 12 pound vertical spinner with a uh, hub motor, so that means the motor's inside the weapon. It's also meant to have a flamethrower, but it got banned at the competition I was gonna go to with it. It still did fine with just the vertical spinner, but kind of sad that that happened. I then started wanting to build like bigger robots, so as an excuse to learn welding and also build a bigger robot, I made a 30 pound combat robot this time. Well, it also has a flamethrower. Okay, this is the last flamethrower thing, I promise. I took the, the module that was meant to be on my combat robot, hooked up a scooter throttle to it, and shot fire from my wrists. Another project I did was I motorized my bike by strapping a big motor and a big gear to the back wheel and it kind of worked. I low-key need to revisit this project. So Form Labs was doing a hardware hackathon and I took the opportunity of course to uh, to make to make a gun. Uh, I'm Tom, I'm Luke, and we made uh, a gun today. <laughs> we, we hope it'll work. Right. Oh. Yeah! Okay, but actually it was kind of interesting making a hand crank air compressor nerf gun. So here's the math. I'm pretty sure most of it's wrong though. Okay, you guys saw Alston talking about combat robotics. These are some combat robots that I made over the summer because I was in California and didn't have access to the MIT tools. They ended up being some of the best robots I ever made and I ended up with a first place finish at the last competition I went to with it. This is the last and most recent combat robot I've been working on and this clip is me heat treating the weapon. That's where I learned how to heat treat steel and I also got a little bit of machining. This robot's a 30 pound combat robot and I think it's pretty formidable. It didn't end up doing so hot at competition, but yeah, there's a video about that on my channel if you wanna check that out. 
So what am I working on now? I recently finished a project on, I was working on making a planetary gearbox. It's two stage planetary. First stage is plastic gears. Second stage is steel gears. Utilizing these brushless 5010 brushless motors um, with, the, with the purpose of making a robot dog out of them. So here is one leg of that robot dog at the moment. Yeah, I feel like building a robot dog is kind of a rite of passage at this point, and it's kind of fun, kind of cool. Okay, a uh, handful of other things I didn't mention yet in the video, but I, I did, was I was part of the Luna Forge team here at my school, which is a NASA Big Idea Challenge thing. We worked on a forge that's supposed to go to the moon. I was in a Delta V startup as the product lead. Uh, if you don't know what Delta V is, it's like MIT's version of Y Combinator. I went to Korea a couple times to teach Korean students for two months. That was a pretty fun experience and it was entirely paid for by MIT, which is really fire. Um, I'm currently the director of Make MIT, so I'm hosting the largest hardware hackathon in the nation, 400 people expected, and I'm an exec on the Comet Robotics Club. Okay, and if you're wondering what I actually did to get into MIT, I was in National Honor Society for two years, I was in Chess Club for two years, I was in Math Club, Move Off with Theta Club for one year, uh, I was in Cross Country and Track and Field for one year, I was a Boy Scout for four years, and my senior year of high school, I became an Eagle Scout. I was in Robotics Club for two years, and I was club president of the Robotics Club for a hot minute. I had a 4.2 GPA. I was class rank 7 out of 500, and I also wrote all my MIT essays in one two-hour sitting, and I didn't proofread it because I, I genuinely didn't think I was going to get into MIT, so I didn't want to spend that much time on my MIT application. And I also did all those clubs mostly for fun. So... It might sound weird, but like math club was fun, not because I was good at math or anything. So I could just like hang out with my friends and kind of bother them. Like I was never good at the math exams or anything, but like just bothering my friends who were good at math was kind of fun. Uh, chess club was genuinely fun. Cross country and track, I met really great people in that. And robotics club, that was also good. National Honor Society, people, if you don't treat National Honor Society right, you're just, you're not gonna gain anything out of it. It's all about meeting people is the point of National Honor Society, in my opinion. The volunteering is how you meet people, and, like, that's how you should think about it. Class rank 7 out of 500. I wasn't valedictorian or anything. The valedictorian at my school did get in, and also the third rank guy at my school also got in the same year. So maybe just a lucky break for our school that year. I really didn't do these clubs to get into MIT, because I knew I had, like, a 100% shot of getting to University of Florida, which I had double scholarships stacked up for. It didn't really matter to me at that point. I just, I did it, I did these clubs for fun. And that might be the difference. My essays, even though they're in one two-hour sitting, probably more passionate than my, um, my common app essays. Just because I sat down, locked in, and just wrote what was on my mind. I, uh, that might have made the difference, honestly. So, yeah. I think I'm going to make another video about this at some point. About um, what I learned at MIT. Maybe how to get into MIT. If you want to see that, subscribe and I will make this video like maybe next week, maybe the week after. So yeah, stay tuned, I suppose.